Is it easier to never come close to greatness or be right on the cusp only to have everything taken from you? That's a debate you can have amongst yourselves in the comments if you'd like, but the question is a great setup for our list today, which is all about fighters who were incredibly close to achieving some huge career milestones, only to fail to earn the distinction for one reason or another. These 10 fighters were staring greatness right in the face and at the last moment had it taken from them. Now, we're not talking about belts per se, those come and go. These are larger goals, career stats, the records that can cement a legacy. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are 10 fighters who came up just short of massive achievements. Number 10, Donald Cerrone. I'm truly interested to know what Cowboy's legacy will be in the sport in a decade or so. Obviously, he was a huge fan favorite throughout his career. He was exciting as hell, anybody, anywhere, anytime. Clearly a standout all-time talent. But for as long as his career was, Donald came up short in every major title fight opportunity that he had, be it in the WEC or the UFC. And while he currently has the record for the most knockdowns in UFC history with 20 and is tied with Charles Oliveira for the most post-fight bonuses, both of those records likely to be surpassed in the near future, where Cowboy came up just short in a place I think could have really cemented his legacy was at UFC 276 against Jim Miller. This matchup of old vets happened to also be the battle for the most wins in UFC history. Both men came in with 23, Miller left with 24, and then Donald called it a career. The other major milestone he left out on, though, when saying goodbye was being just two fights shy of 40 in the promotion, which would have given him the record for the most fights in UFC history. Now, of course, it's not to say that that rascally old Jimmy Miller wouldn't have surpassed those as well, but at least had Cowboy reached them, he'd have a few notable records to hang his hat on. Number nine, Damian Maya. <laughs> I'm the backpack loaded up with things and knickknacks to anything that you might need, I've got inside for you. These are of course the famous words of Damian Maya as he rode his opponents with a body triangle for 15 minutes until they finally succumbed to a rear naked choke or the unbearable frustration of being able to do absolutely nothing. If there's anything that Maya will be known for in his career besides his warm smile, it's likely to be that very image of him controlling his opponents for the better part of an entire fight. After Maya's loss to Bilal Muhammad last year, the Brazilian's contract was not not renewed and he was removed from the active UFC roster, unlikely to ever see it again even if he's not officially retired. And with that exit, Damian missed out on an all-time record in the promotion that he was oh so close to and couldn't have been more perfect for. Needing only seven more minutes of control time, and let's be real, that's easily achievable in a single fight for Maya, the two-time title contender would have passed George St. Pierre for the top spot across all divisions. There are a couple guys creeping up on that record now, but I don't think they'll ever get there personally, this could have been something Maya held on to forever. Number 8. The Bantamweight Division So something really interesting is happening at 135 pounds that in my research for this video didn't appear to be an issue in any other division. Win streaks are hard to come by even if you are an elite fighter, but we've seen extensive ones. At least 10 fighters have won 12 or more in a row at various points in UFC history, but for some reason, nobody at Bantamweight can get past 7 straight wins. In fact, it is at current a 5 way tie at the top. So let's talk about how each of them came up short of that impossible eighth victory. Rafael Asuncao went on a run from 2011 to 2016 before running into TJ Dillashaw, who he'd beaten during that streak via split decision. Speaking of TJ, he also broke Hennon Barrow's seven-fight UFC run when he took the title, which in reality was a 33-fight streak shattered. Pyotr Jan illegally need his way out of an eighth win, but at current, we have two fighters at seven actively who may or may not meet their demise. Our two candidates to break the curse are Marab Dawalish Wheelie and current champion Aljamain Sterling. Their fates are yet unknown as of this video, but given that nobody's broken eight since the Bantamweights were introduced in 2010, I'm not holding my breath and it would certainly be a huge achievement. Number seven, Gleason Tebow. One of the great things about all-time stat records is that they don't require you to be a champion to obtain them, but they could potentially define your legacy as a fighter should you achieve one. Gleason Tebow is a fantastic example of a guy who was in such a spot only to sadly come up just short. The Brazilian fought in the UFC from 2006 all the way to 2018, amassing during that time 29 total fights. His debut was against Nick Diaz in his first run in the UFC. Now, over the course of T-Bow's 12 years, there's not a ton you can point out that would be considered legacy-defining. He does have a victory over former champion Rafael Dos Anjos. He did have a very close fight with Habib that many felt he won. He earned a couple fight night bonuses. Nothing too crazy. Where Gleason shined, though, was that he was a fucking takedown machine. The man had 11 against 
against Josh Neer in a three-round fight. And over the course of his UFC run, he amassed 84 in total, which just so happens to put him six shy of the all-time record for all divisions in the promotion. The man who holds that distinction, George St. Pierre. Yes, had T-Bow had just a bit more time, he could have surpassed one of the greatest champions ever to hold a record that most likely won't be beaten soon. Unfortunately, with four straight losses, Gleason was cut in 2018, the most takedowns forever just out of reach. Number 6. Stipe Miocic Daniel Cormier inadvertently saved one of his best friend's last remaining records when he knocked out Stipe at UFC 226 to become the double champ. Drew Carey was an unlikely champion when he stunningly KO'd a hard-charging Fabricio Verdum in Brazil in just under three minutes, but Miocic went on to defend his title successfully three times after that against Alistair Overeem, JDS, and Francis Ngannou. Now, having three defenses was a huge deal. The heavyweight division has the longest history of any in the UFC, and up to that point in 2018, two straight defenses was the most any champion had ever had, including Cain Velasquez, who was at the time considered arguably the best champion ever. A distinction the fighter out of AKA still had, though, was the longest reign at 896 days, which sure, compared to the insanity of Anderson Silva's 2,457, doesn't seem like much, and yes, sometimes these numbers get conflated because of injuries. But I would argue at heavyweight it means something, because it is so damn hard to maintain a top spot in that division, and a record's a record, you know? Just a little over three months out from that number, Miocic would lose his title, and given the frequency of his fights, had he remained champion, he surely would have surpassed Kane before the next challenger came about. Stipe did avenge the loss, but it reset the timer. Safe to say that Velasquez will likely hold on to that 896 spot for some time, especially after they strip in Ghanu when his contract is up. You know it's coming, guys. Number 5. Joseph Benavidez The story of Joe B's career is a truly interesting one, and in many ways is defined by his rivalry with Demetrius Johnson. The two competed for the inaugural flyweight title against each other in 2012, where Benavidez would lose via split decision. After a three-fight rally, he would get a second chance at DJ, only to be KO'd in the first round. From there, he would go on a six-fight run that included a win over future champion Henry Cejudo, and then Johnson lost to Triple C and left, but by 2019, Joe had caught up with at least one aspect of his rival's legacy, the most wins in flyweight history. Both men now had 13, but with Benavidez still actively on the roster and at the top of the division, it looked very likely that he would surpass Johnson and carve a piece of the division's history all for his own. However, his final two chances would be in back-to-back -back title fights with Davis and Figueredo, stopped in both matchups. He would fight once more at UFC 259 before retiring, but the bout ended up being a catchway because Askarov weighed in over, meaning even if he'd won, he would still be sharing that most wins distinction with Mighty Mouse. Number 4. Fedor Emelianenko There's only one fighter I can think of off the top of my head that went a full decade in the sport in the modern era without losing, and that is Jose Aldo, and he barely made that cut before Connor came around. It's a pretty insane distinction, especially in MMA where, as Kamaru Usman recently discovered, a single strike can end a near-perfect night, and especially against top-tier opponents. It's not like Jose was fighting scrubs for 10 years. Going into Fedor's strike force matchup with Fabricio Verdum in June of 2010, he had gone 28 fights and 9 years, 6 months without a single loss. He'd beaten everybody, the best of the best the heavyweight division had to offer with the exception of a few UFC standouts, and of course the guy he was about to fight who had been cut from Zufa 2 years earlier. Now we all know the story, Verdum caught Fedor in a triangle armbar in the first minute of the fight, and the rest is MMA history. But had the last emperor managed to finish his boomerang throwing foe on the ground instead, there's no doubt he would have made it to a full decade unbeaten, as his next bout would come in February of 2011, putting him well past that date. Oh well, he never really lost the first time anyway. Number 3. John Jones What do you get the man that has everything? The list of John Jones's all-time records is extensive to the point of being exhausting. Most consecutive wins at light heavyweight, most wins in a UFC title fight, youngest fighter to ever be champion, on and on and on. There's no doubt that even with his absolutely dumpster fire full of troubles outside the cage, he'll still be considered an all-time great in it, whether we like it or not. But because of said problems, John has not exactly had a consistent track record despite not losing. For instance, he should at this point, if he'd never been 
suspended or stripped of his titles, have racked up 14 undisputed defenses, which is why he's made this list. Because upon leaving the light heavyweight division, John came oh so close to yet another major milestone. Due to all of his issues when JBJ beat Dominic Reyes, he tied Demetrius Johnson for the most title defenses in UFC history at 11. But then he vacated the title and hasn't fought since, as he works towards his heavyweight debut. Now, could John win a title at heavyweight and surpass Mighty Mouse? Absolutely. Could he lose to Stipe and retire? That could happen too. There's no guaranteeing that Jones will ever win a heavyweight title, let alone then successfully defend it, and so that major accomplishment for now, in theory, will remain outside his grasp. Number 2. Habib Nurmagomedov When the Eagle surprisingly flew off following his victory over Justin Gaethje at UFC 254 to eat burgers and start fight promotions, Habib left more behind than the vacant lightweight title. At a perfect 29-0, there's no doubt that Nurmagomedov, who is already a UFC Hall of Famer, has a rock-solid legacy. In fact, even with cutting his career a bit short, there are plenty of fans who argue he's the greatest fighter of all time, sort of in the same sense as, say, like a Barry Sanders. He walked away early, but it was clear he was the best. For Habib, ending his career following 254 meant we'd never get that nice even 30 wins, something he and his father mentioned as the target goal before retirement, with of course plans changing after his untimely death. But it wasn't just the number. Another title defense would have put Nurmagomedov in a league of his own at lightweight as well, as he's currently tied for the most title defenses in the division's history with BJ Penn, Frankie Edgar, and Benson Henderson. And again, it's not as if the surpassing of those milestones was going to make or break the legacy of Habib, but they were certainly a big deal, and absolutely something I'm sure the champion wanted before retiring, making his decision to do so on the grounds he decided all the more impressive. Number 1. Kamaru Usman What's the most you ever lost on a head kick? Leon Edwards' last-minute KO finish of the Nigerian Nightmare at UFC 278 cost him way more than just the welterweight title. Usman was cruising towards tying one of the most coveted records in the sport, the longest UFC winning streak. While Johnny Bones, DJ, GSP, Habib, and Max Holloway couldn't get over the 13-win hump, Kamaru surpassed it and was just a single victory away from tying Anderson Silva at 16. Of course, that didn't happen, and now there's no way he's ever going to capture that number, considering he has to restart in 16 fights is a lot. In fact, I don't know who the hell could possibly take the Spider's top spot. While that was the biggest loss on the night for Usman, besides, of course, the belt itself, he also would have surpassed Matt Hughes for the second most consecutive welterweight title defense meaning his pursuit of GSP's record in that category is now likely done forever as well. And to a lesser degree of importance, he would have tied RDA for the most decision wins in UFC history had he been victorious, which I'm not sure is a good thing or a bad thing. I suppose winning is winning whether it's a decision or not. Kamaru may get his belt back from Rocky, but there's a lot more Edwards took from him on that night he'll never see again. You know what nobody can ever take away from you, though? The fact that you finished this video. This video masterfully assembled by Luke Taylor like he's Dr. Manhattan. Peace piecing back together every atom of his own form after being obliterated. Is that an analogy, or am I implying that Luke is now a blue-skinned deity using his infinite powers to create for MMA on point? That is for you to decide, but either way, you should follow him on social media. Ben Rosette, too, who made that banger intro. And while you're at it, help me by liking and subscribing and having a fantastic day, guys.